fuck you go? Oh, there you are. There you are, trying to hide. Time for next one. <laughs> Dang it, dirty. Rescuers! Hey! Fucking finally, a movie I can talk about. Ah, I absolutely fucking love this movie. The Rescuers. I at least have a lot more to say about this movie, because I think this one's a lot more relevant to the history of Disney. So yeah, I absolutely love The Rescuers. It is one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. While not a, pe a lot of people agree, because they say it's boring. One of the reasons I love this movie so much is because of the quiet moments. It's a very quiet movie. Right. So apparently this movie was on the shelf by Disney himself. And he stated, and the reason he didn't do it was because he stated it was too political. And he didn't want to get in. I don't know how true that is. But that's just what I read. I didn't know Disney. He did. And this was during the time when they were doing books. So it seemed like a neat little book at the time. The movie was mostly based off of the sequel, just called Miss Bianca. Because the, the first one was called The Rescuers, and then the second one was called Miss Bianca. And the first one was about a prison, like them breaking out of prison, or them trying to break prisoners, like someone out of prison. They were they originally before they were called the Rescue Aid Society. They were the Prisoner Aid Society, something like that. I don't know. It's been a while since I've looked that up. Oh my God, this looks nothing like Bernard. As I've probably said before, I really love the sketchiness of these movies. That was due to them using Xerox. save them money and time on inking but it caused the lines to be not as accurate so you don't get the smoothness of it, of other Disney movies but I don't know, something about it just made it look creepier and like it looked like drawings like you can almost see like the lines in, or the like scratchy lines in between and that was just something I really loved for some reason this also has my absolute favorite song that's ever been in a Disney movie, which is The Journey. It's the song that plays through the opening. This was the first Disney movie that they released without, like, that was in production while Disney was dead. So while Disney, like, kind of had it on the table, he never officially started this one. He started, like, he knew about the production of Robin Hood and Aristocats, and Jungle Book, I think, was the last one that he saw to completion. Or he died right before it came out. Or... It was around that era. And this was also the first one that Don Bluth was fully in charge of. He was fully animation director. And I noticed a lot of movement that's very Bluth, like... There's the scene when he, they're running away in the zoo, where he kind of trips over himself. It's very bluth, very fluid, very just so much personality just in that little run cycle. It's not really in the sequel. Well, a lot of people like the sequel more because it's a really exciting and is a very well-made movie. I'd probably put it up there as my favorite Renaissance movie if it wasn't for Hunchback and Mulan. One funny thing about this movie, and this is, um, I don't know, I like it, but I can see why people didn't. They didn't fill in the whites of their eyes. They just kind of left them blank. And that was one of the reasons that Bluth left was... He found stuff like that just really unnecessary. Which, yeah, I can see. It's just kind of, you want to make your film look as good as possible. But I think it gave this movie a really, like, interesting look to it. 
I think the voice work in general is just so natural sounding. Like, it sounds like these are real people having a conversation with each other, other than some actor reading a line. Like, it, they stumble over their words sometimes, and it really gives off a lot of personality, especially in Bernard. So far, the he this head kind of reminds me of Sawyer from Cats Don't Dance. Yeah, I don't know, this... This film just, it felt so... It felt like it was an adult film, almost, with little kid aspects. The only real complaint I can ever give the film is... I think the overuse of just old-school Disney voices. Like, you know, if you watch this era of Disney, which was, this is a huge problem in that era, especially. Because they reused the same voices over and over, and they didn't even try to change them. You got the Sheriff of Nottingham in there, you have Rufus who... It's like all the hop 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 voices. Like, you know what I mean. Like, go back and listen to it and you'll be like, Oh, yeah, that. It's hard to describe it. They also have references to Moonshine in this, which is pretty cool. I don't know, there's something about Bianca that just like, oh, best Disney girl. Best Disney girl. She was so full of energy, so, so likable. A lot of people make fun of the little girl for being a little girl. Oh no, she talks with a lisp and is annoying. Yeah, like a fucking little girl. Have you ever seen one? They fucking suck. Madame Medusa is straight up one of my favorite villains ever, and I'm sad. A lot of people just call her like a ripoff of Cruella de Vil. Which I could see it like aesthetically, but I think she's way more like... I don't know, she's way more interesting. I, see, I love her design a lot more than Cruella's. Even though, I guess they both work in their own right, that's fine. Like there's the horrid like ugly skeleton woman that's obsessed with like vanity and like greed although Koala's is more obsessed with vanity because with her she's not after money in general she's just like i want coats give me coats medusa straight up pulls a gun on these people look let's get like a there's a mouse in the house let's pull out a fucking shoddy Honestly, I cannot shoot enough sunshine up this movie's ass. It's got such a tone that's uniquely its own. God, this looks like Miss. This looks like a fucking Miss Finster. Like her name's fucking Medusa. Like how much better can you get? And of course, this, the home release of this movie also had the very infamous scene where you can see a naked lady. Stop for like, I think it was in like two or three frames. You can see some naked chick. And of course, you got the bird, Orville, and his brother, Redenbacher. Apparently, they made them albatrosses because one of the animators said he thought al he saw a video of an albatross taking off and he thought it looked fucking hilarious. This looks like a five year old fucking drew it. Ugh. Yeah, while I do like Orville, one, I think he's barely in the movie, and I think Wil they did Wilbur way better. It's interesting that out of all the movies that Disney had, the one they chose to make a sequel to was this one. Up until Wreck-It Ralph. Well, I guess Fantasia, but they would planned to do Fantasia sequels from the start, it was just money was the reason they didn't. Everything's about money. Wow, oh, look at that straight line there. Fucking hack over here. Yeah, all around I think this is just a very good movie. It has a lot of atmospheres. 
I think the story's real good. And also, this is the first edition of Penny. Fuck it, let's just do, draw Penny quick. Yeah, everyone always talks shit about Penny because she talks. We are too soft, Brutus. I, don't, I, I just don't get it. Like, she's a little girl. She talks like a fucking little girl. Probably played by a little girl, too. Sounds like a fucking little girl. Like, what do you want from her? Like, if you find it annoying, sorry, you find little girls annoying. Yeah, I don't know. This is my favorite era of Disney, just because of... I don't know. I... I it felt like they were trying to break the Disney mold while still trying to be, like, you know, Disney. You know? Do you not know? You probably don't know. But yeah, this is where the big Penny conspiracy theory starts. She gets taken in from an orphan at the end of this film after being kidnapped by a fucking ugly bitch. There's The Rescuers. It's a very, very good film. I highly recommend it to anyone that thinks it's boring. Go watch it as an adult and maybe you get a new, ex like, new thing from it. Unless you have the attention span of a fucking two-year-old that can't appreciate any atmosphere. You just want boom, boom action.